as with any change in initiative, it's thinking about why are we doing this? Mindfulness based interventions are no different. So think about what is the purpose? What is implementing mindfulness going to address? Is it to improve well-being, raise performance, reduce absence levels? You know, have a clear sense of how mindfulness is going to make a difference in your organisation. That's the that's first most, you know, we need to have what has been described mindfulness ready organisations because it's around the individual developing personal skills that are going to impact on their performance in their job role and ultimately performance of the organisation. So we need to approach it ethically. This brings us to another key point, which is around you need to have a mindfulness champion who really knows what, in, you know, what mindfulness means from the inside out. Mahatma Gandhi said that we need to be the change that we want to see. So mindfulness champions have to have really engaged in mindfulness at, an, at a sufficient level of understanding to be able to communicate that in the language of the organisation because there are popular images of mindfulness as some kind of you know, sitting on my cushion and apparently doing nothing. However, it's got organisational benefits, so you need to use the evidence. What evidence is out there in my arena that other organisations are doing that and what are they finding? How did they approach it? And what's relevant to us in our context? And the book Case Studies are really brilliant for that. They give you a sense of a smorgasbord of approaches, which I do, you know, I love that phrase, which means you can see what is actually going on, what they're doing, how is this appropriate to us. How are you going to engage stakeholders? You know, there are organisations and social entities made up of lots of different peoples with lots of interests, power, etc. What are we going to do in terms of engaging them? Give them a taste of mindfulness. So it's very much approaching evolution, not revolution. It needs to be experienced, so have taster sessions. Do it gently and go with care, as I think the SMG case study talk about mindfulness implementations. And then it's about, are we going to measure this? You know, it's the great you know, search for the holy grail in organisations with HR initiatives and implementing XYZ and the impact on performance. What's going to count? There are measures out there we see in the book, or rather in the case studies, particular measures that are really well, you know, well tested. So the Mindfulness Attention Awareness Scale, the MACE, for example, or the Kentucky Inventory of Mindfulness Skills. And we define what they are and what they measure. Are they relevant to us? Are you going to use performance data? So maybe absentee levels. Or more specifically, impact in terms of individual performance after mindfulness. Well-being is part of it, but we're implementing it in organisational contexts. So think about the measures, quantitative and qualitative. Okay. Then think about who you're going to work with. So as well as the mindfulness champion, typically they work with an external mindfulness practitioner who's journeyed along mindfulness a few more years ahead. Okay, so who you need to approach that as someone describes it in the book, choicefully. Okay. And then maybe it is a loop of faith. Because we often think we can do something strategically, systematically, to bring about organisational change. But in a world that is absolutely complex, is uncertain, we don't necessarily know if mindfulness is going to make a difference. So you'll find that some champions, because they took passionately and they've experienced being able to make better decisions, feel better, be less reactive, less judgmental, more emotionally intelligent. These are all things that we want in organisations. So sometimes qualitative data counts, 